And we are back. This is Alyssa Fuchs. I'm here with Selena Hill and Jackie Cohen. And I'm about to give you the quickie. And it's going to be quick. And I'm going to be talking fast. Thus so the name. Thus the, the name. Quickie. Keep following. So today I thought it meant something else. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it, it means that too. Channeling but. Stanley over <laughs> All right? there. Right? <laughs> All right? <laughs> we're we're going to get it. We'll get into that off the air. Anyways, here's the quickie. And um, it, today we're talking about same-sex marriage. This week, uh, the su- same-sex marriage finally went to the Supreme Court. Uh, it's been a long time coming. There's been all these lower courts rulings. If you don't remember, there was a whole bunch of states where the district court said that these uh, bans on same-sex marriage were unconstitutional, and then the court said that they were not going to review those decisions, so that effectively legalized uh, same-sex marriage in those states, uh, bringing the number of states, I believe, that recognize same-sex marriage up to 33. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it, it may be 34. Um, anyways, so what happened was the Supreme Court essentially said they were not going to entertain the larger issue uh, of of this until a court, a, a district court, a federal court upheld one of these bans. Um, and that happened. And in the Sixth Circuit, and I believe also in the Fifth Circuit, they upheld these state bans um, on same-sex marriage. And these courts said that it was not unconstitutional uh, to say that same-sex, uh, these states did not have to grant same-sex marriage a marriage license. These uh, plaintiffs, or what we'll call petitioners, once you get to the Supreme Court level, they then brought an appeal to the Supreme Court. And they said to the Supreme Court, you need to resolve this question. So on Tuesday, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments after months and months of briefing. Uh, If you don't know, uh, a lot of groups, the petitioners and the respondents, which are the two parties, uh, or you could call them the plaintiffs and the defendants, if that's easier for you. They wrote their own briefs and then other people wrote other briefs that are called friend of the court briefs. And then ultimately on Tuesday, they heard the oral arguments and they were going to answer two questions. And so um, that they're going to give a decision on in June. The first question is whether or not states have the right to ban same sex couples from getting married or whether banning same sex couples from getting married violates the federal U.S. Constitution. The second question that they're going to ask, sir, they only need to get to if they answer uh, depending on what they answer in the first question, because the second question is, is assuming that it is legal for states to say we're not going to grant you a marriage license and it's not unconstitutional for states to say we're not going to allow same-sex couples to get married in this state, do those states then have to recognize uh, same-sex couples who have been married out of state? Um, So... There's been a lot of chatter about what may happen. Those are the two legal issues. Um, and, and as I just mentioned, if they, depending on how they answer the first question, they may not need to get to the second question. So if the Supreme Court comes out and says that it is a violation of the Constitution to ban same-sex couples from getting married uh, because it's a form of discrimination under the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause, then they never need to answer the second question because that's going to effectively legalize gay marriage in the entire country because mm-hmm. then every state law that bans same-sex couples from getting married will be null and void. And all those states will have to go forward and they'll have to issue marriage licenses. However, if they do not answer that first question, if they say that it is constitutional for these states to ban same-sex marriage, then they're going to have to get to the second question, which is, okay, let's say... Michigan wants that or uh, use Indiana. Yeah. Um, let's say Indiana wants to say we're banning same sex couples from getting a marriage license. But then a couple from Indiana goes to New York on vacation and they get a marriage license and then they come back to Indiana. Does Indiana then have to recognize their marriage? Right. So obviously the court only needs to answer that question if they allow these bans to stand. Um, A lot of people are speculating what might happen. The swing vote is seen as Justice Kennedy. Um, Some people are saying, well, Justice Kennedy answered a lot of, asked a lot of very hard questions during the first part of the arguments. But during the second part of the arguments, he was unbelievably quiet, which leads a lot of people to think that he already has his mind made up, that he's going to go with the four more liberal justices on the first question. And so he didn't ask a lot of questions in the second arguments because he already kind of is like, well, we're not going to need to get to that. You had a question? One thing I found really interesting is the argument. Um, I forgot which justice said it, but they said it at least once and they were like, um, so I don't think that the court has the authority to make a decision and to change like the definition of marriage, something that's been embedded in our society since the beginning of time. And I don't think we should be the ones to change it. And it was like, I don't know, like, can you further, what yeah, do you so think about that, Alyssa? There, you know, the, the response 
response that the lawyer gave uh, Mary Bonotto, who was arguing the case on the he- on behalf of the petitioner, she said that we're not looking to change the institution of marriage. We're just looking to join the institution of marriage. Uh, obviously, there was some back and forth about that. Um, and 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 but there's another interesting thing that is going on, um, which is you may actually see Roberts join the majority and, and write his own narrow opinion because Roberts um, asked a really important question. And he said, well, isn't this just a simple case of sex discrimination? Right. He's like, if if Bob wants to marry Mary, then Bob can marry Mary. But if Bob wants to marry Steve, he can't marry Steve. So aren't we just discriminating on the basis of sex? And then this is an easy question. So some people actually think that Roberts is going to join. It's called a, concur- a plurality opinion, which is he's going to join the majority in his vote. But then he's going to write a separate opinion on narrower, narrower grounds, which essentially says that it's sex discrimination. Um, now, obviously, the respondents argue on the other side. They said it's it's not sex discrimination because Bob can still get married married, that we're not stopping Bob from getting married. Bob just has to marry Mary. So he's not being discriminated against based on his sex. So that's their counter argument. Um, I mean, there was a lot of really great quotes. I urge you to go listen to the audio file of it. I mean, one of the best things that happened was there was a big emphasis on procreation. And and Ginsburg jumped in and said, well, what happens if a 70-year-old straight couple wants to go get married? Like, uh, you know, obviously, she didn't say it, but like, obviously, they can't procreate. And the lawyer for the other side was like, well, the man could still procreate, Ew. like completely <laughs> ignoring the fact that like Ginsburg was saying like his wife is 70 also. So right. she clearly cannot have kids. But um, I'm trying to be optimistic and I'm hoping that they rule in favor of marriage. But um, what even, do you think it's like a 50 50 chance? You know, I do. It's really hard to tell. I think it's more like 60, 40, maybe okay. 70, 30 in favor of marriage. But I think even if they don't go the full Monty, that they're going to answer the second question saying that. Even if the states can ban gay marriage, they have to recognize out-of-state marriages. Right. But that saying that, that would lead to so much more litigation. Then there's going to be all this protracted litigation and more cases that go right. back it up to the court. And it's soon. not going to end. And I think that they're, they, if they were smart, they're probably just going to end it now. Right. So I'm going to try and be optimistic. On that note, we really, really have to get going. But yes. we will be back next week right here on 90.3 FM WHCR Harlem Radio. Definitely. Have a great afternoon. And definitely check us out on our podcast again lyvbhradio.com and thanks again for our in-studio guest Colette Martin for joining us here and we'll be back next week